Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is that you Inky Savages are joining us for episode number 141 of the Penboy Roy Pentertainment Podcast. Excited to be here as we usually are, myself and my co-host Ooh. Tom. Yay. Where's the where's the soundboard with the, the applause? We got that? Oh, I, we could that, do that. Do they take that feature out of Riverside too, along with the confetti when it finishes uploading? Because that is, mm, I, got, I don't know. Where's the, where's the extra bells and whistles that we get with this thing here? I don't know. I think I'm paying for nothing. It's. I, I think we are, too. I think it's I, almost, yeah, no? Do I, I have, have to do it I myself? Have, yeah, do the clapping yourself because it's. I have Yay! all the media here, but it won't load. Entertainment Podcast, we love you! <laughs> Take off your shirt, Roy! So I don't think it's working. Tom, keep it on, please! <laughs> <laughs> okay, we, we we kind of have a job to do, so let's get through. Let's get okay. through this. I don't know what's in that drink that you're drinking, mm -hmm. but it might it might be something intoxicating. So, anyway, this week I want to talk about some Korean stuff, right? Okay. Not because I'm proud of being Korean American, but because the new Minhwa Project series from Colorverse mm. is here. Well, not See? here, but it's it's everywhere with retailers following the kingdom series inc this is the second series of inks themed after traditional korean culture mm. minhwa comes from the traditional chosun folk art paintings okay it's pretty you cool. know I'm, I'm assuming that you just know all about this right i'm totally not reading something that's on the screen right now colorverse for this project focused on the paintings of the lotus flower and the peony to express the color and beauty of modern day folk style paintings done with fountain pens. I don't know what I just read. Does that make any sense? Colorverse for this project? I am, I, but I don't on? know, but I am looking forward to your full explanation, detailed cultural note taking that you did mm -hmm. prior to this podcast that you, I, I am, I, I'm expecting a beautiful cultural lesson and a history lesson from you, Roy. Thank you. That, that was it, bro. Our, so our, now our, available, our <laughs> inquire to purchase at goldspot.com. Now, don't just go to goldspot.com and purchase it. Go to Goldspot through the affiliate link in the description below. The affiliate link is a way to support the Pentertainment Podcast and all things Pentertainment related and support myself and Tom as well as his job. Gold Spot. Check them out at the affiliate link dot down below. Gold Spot website. And be sure to use coupon code ROY at checkout oh. for an additional savings. Oh. Remember oh, we what? talked we talked about we were so we're we're changing the, the coupon code. Oh, what's the yeah. new coupon code? So we're changing the coupon code to OINK. O I N K mm. for the month of November and then also the first week of December. So we're trying a little something different because mm -hmm. we've been using the Roy coupon code for so long and it has been brought to our attention that it has leapt onto a lot of these coupon websites that just they grab coupons wherever they are and that and that also the browser extensions that if you check out you say, Oh, search for available coupons, oh, they throw Roy in there. So people have been using Roy without being a fan of Roy's. Or cool. listening to a single episode of the podcast or watching a, a, a video. So we're trying a little something different where we're going to be changing the pro coupon code every month or so. And then that way y'all can, you know, be refresh yourselves with the podcast with Roy, with I, you know, a, a, in a monthly basis just to get that new coupon code. So, okay. Okay. So yeah. in commemoration of our good friend, the odd oink. <laughs> and Auto Ink comes from Auto Ink, right? So Auto Ink is your company, but I read it as Odd Oink, which I think is hilarious. So in commemoration of my good friend, Tom, the Odd Oink, coupon code Oink at checkout for an additional savings on all products on the Gold Spot website through my affiliate link. And, and there are some restrictions that do apply with those discounts, unfortunately, but I don't think they apply to the Colorverse Inc., the series that is called... I think you can the, rock it with the Colorverse Inc., yeah. Yeah, you can rock it with the new Minhua project series from Colorverse that is here. Notice he didn't use the word exclusive anywhere in the read. I'm almost disappointed. And finally, what I'm drinking here, in addition to my seltzer water, 
is a cup of BRL coffee from brlcoffeeco.com. Please check out I, my particular favorite is Kiss of Life. Please check out coffee at brlcoffeeco.com and use coupon code ROY at checkout for an additional savings on all products on the brlcoffeeco.com website. So let's clear things up. Gold spot discount code is OINK, O-I-N-K, BRL Coffee Co. Discount code is still ROY. So please check those out. Check out his website at brlcoffeeco.com. He's got a lot of fun swag. I think you guys will enjoy it. It's just great coffee with a great, sarcastic, humorous attitude. And the caffeine doesn't give you a crackhead jitter, which is always fantastic, right? So anyway, thanks for joining us for episode number 141 of the Penboy Roy Entertainment Podcast. Before we get started, I want to give you guys a quick disclaimer. This podcast is not scripted and therefore will contain potty mouth words, both from Tom and I. So be forewarned, we have been warned. Now, on to the podcast. The Penboy Roy Entertainment Podcast. Stage seven. And it looks like you have you just bought it from outside. No, so basically, I was out and I did get a cup of coffee from outside. All right. But then I finished that cup of coffee and, and then I you didn't refill. Right, it. and then I refilled it just because I didn't feel like rinsing the mug out and putting it in the dishwasher afterwards. Hey, since it's more already, ecologically sensitive. Well, so. since I already have the cup, I might as well use it a few times throughout the day. Right. Right? And I think that's okay. It's copacetic. It's not like flipping your underwear and re-wearing it over and over, is it? Not exactly. No, right? So (laughs) I'm just going to reuse the coffee cup throughout the day and then at the end of the day throw it into the recycling trash, right? Because Where where your underwears are. Right. Well, no, no, no. I just flip them inside out every day. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just kidding. I don't do that. I don't wear underwear. No, I'm kidding about that too. So anyway... (laughs) So anyway, yeah, no, I mean, I just feel like it's a good idea to reuse it. And then after this episode, I'm going to go to the gym. Okay. I might finish my coffee because I take my coffee black during my workout. I don't know. I do as well. So I'm right there with you. But you drink coffee while you work out? Oh, not while I work out. um, But Wait, first of all, do do you even lift, bro? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Yeah, bro. Swole. Here. (laughs) So what do we have to talk about this week? We got we got some interesting stuff coming up. At the end of the week, we have Fountain Pen Day, mm-hmm. Friday, November 4th. What are you guys at Gold Spot doing for Fountain Pen Day? Besides a new release that is exclusive mm-hmm. to Gold Spot. Well, we didn't actually even talk about uh, – we haven't talked about the, the Bennu that was dropped last week yet. So, Let's talk about it. Yeah, Let's bring up some online photos so that we can oh, share with it. everybody. I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared for the photos. Right. And we're not. Pre- we're never prepared for anything. So just, uh, right. you know, that's just as a as a standard procedure. So let right. me get this going here. Okay. So we got we got a new Bennu. We got two new Bennus. Is that the coffee bean and the Lucky Charms? Wait, wait the coffee bean, and the Lucky Charms. Is that that's an older one? No, no, no. I'm thinking of the wrong thing. Then what new Bennu? I like how I'll show runs. you. I shall out show you. In with the old, in with the new. In with the new. The new. Yeah. <laughs> so this is in the Talisman collection. Um, there's the dream, the dream bean you were talking about, and then the dream four leaf bean. clover. But the two new ones that are exclusive to Gold Spot Pens released last week are the Royal Flush. So I'll just click and open one of those here so you can take a bigger look here. There we go. So that is the Ooh, that red cool. version of the Royal Flush. It has a sort of, I would say, very similar to Vodka on the Rocks in terms of it's like it has like a it's like a clear resin, but has all of the silvery sparkles going through it. Um, mm-hmm. Then on top of that, they'll throw in all of the various symbols that you would find on playing cards. So clubs, spades, hearts, diamonds. Uh, hearts and diamonds of red, of course, and then spades and clubs are black, and uh, that's that's uh, the kitsch. We call it the kitsch shot. That's like the shot of the the pen completely, almost you know, completely disassembled. Uh, then we have a couple of beauty shots. Uh, it comes in a standard Bennu box that you would normally see other Bennus come in, uh, but with the addition of the little information booklet, which is not pictured, that would talk about 
the um the the like the inspiration behind the pen because uh the entire talisman collection is references like a uh a something that's like lucky or imbued with magical powers so what they did was they took the 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 um what's it called the buckeye the uh the from the like the little buckeye nut from the buckeye tree which is famous in ohio um that they took it out of ground it up i guess and then infused it with the material because having a buckeye is considered lucky especially for uh gamblers too it's like they it's like you could rub it's, it's said to give you extra good luck if you rub a buckeye before i guess you know playing cards or pulling a slot machine and things like oh, that so okay um, can you go back to the kit shot the kit shot or was it, it called the kit shot the, oh no so i was i'm just adding a little emphasis there um, okay. That's when it. you described this, you said this is a photo of it almost completely dissembled. I'm looking at it completely and totally disassembled. What do you mean by almost disassembled? Well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe you might be able to get the clip out, possibly. I don't know. I should, I'm just saying, like, this is basically as, as much as one could usually break it down. I don't know if you can mm. break it down any further than that. But Why, why would you? I don't know. As if you want to just do that sort of thing if you want to strip it down to every single part that you possibly could you might be able to get the clip out i'm not sure if you got the clip out then that goes from disassembled to deconstructed that's yeah. the way i see it i mean uh, I what's see. the neat see you even pulled out the nib and feed why mm -hmm. why sh why take a picture like that because i, I you get could... i get unscrewing the nib sec the nib right. unit, but what was the point of pulling out the nib and feed to show that you could at least be able to do that too it's, you know, okay. it's, 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 you could disassemble it to that point. I know sometimes that m normally you wouldn't need to, but let's say if you threw like shimmer ink and it's gotten really deep into the fins of the feed and it got stuck there and you need to, so at least, you know, it's like, okay, well it screws out, but I could also pull the nib and feed out. Okay, Cause a lot of people don't realize that when they, when they get a nib and feed unit that usually unscrews and screws, they think, oh, well that's, that's it. I can't disassemble it any further, but you actually mm. can, you can pull anything, any nib and feed unit that you can unscrew. Usually you could always pull the feed and nib straight out. So, so Bryce had sent me a skull and bones the other day and in the box, I saw that long cartridge that's in pictured there. Do you see that long international size cartridge? Yep. So. Usually the cartridges that come with fountain pens are usually the short cartridges. These right. are the long. Why do you yeah. think, in your opinion, that the long cartridges are not the standard, considering that they hold so much more ink and are probably better in terms of longer writing? Why do you think those are not, the long ones are not the standard, whereas the short ones are the standard? That's a good question because you would think you that... Shut, you, why don't you shut the screen for now? Oh. Uh, that's because I think it's, I think it's primarily because the manufacturers just don't want to pony up for the additional expense, you know, because I mean, I, I think are you, you already see it with many, many pens in the lower, you know, end range or you not even lower end, but, but like even you see, um, I think, I think maybe like Conklin and Monteverdi might be different about it, but like a lot of pens tend to not even put converters in there you know they'll put like one small international cartridge in there uh like i think faber castell is one of these that will do that they don't uh, like even for pens that are 50 60 70 dollars like they'll just put a cartridge in there and that's it no but that's that's what i'm saying why do you think that it's always the short international cartridge i it's, think that they're, people they're cheaper would... how much cheaper do you think a short is versus a regular, I mean, a long international cartridge. I mean, because it'll fit. If you can fit a converter in a pen, you can certainly fit a long international cartridge in there. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, they're, they're, it's probably significantly cheap. It's a cheap enough that they would be like, all right, we're just going to put that one in there. Just to give them just to give them ink to start with. That's all. So do you think that it's actually cheaper? I think so. That's why? Do you think yeah. that's the only reason? I would, I would have to imagine that's the only reason why. Hmm. How Either much that or is... also also maybe considering if the cartridge itself would maybe somehow which I don't really see that happening too much, but like if the cartridge sits on the shelf for a while or if it somehow gets punctured, if it's a smaller amount of ink that's in there, then it's not such a big deal. But like if there's a lot of ink and it's just like 
that, that cartridge is rolling around, which it is in a Bennu box. It's just it's not – the converter is always attached to the pen. The cartridge is just sit, sitting there in the box. But if some for some reason that cartridge gets punctured, that's a lot more ink flowing out into the box than if it was a smaller one. Or if it's been sitting on the shelf for a while, then people get a cartridge and they're like, oh, well, there's like half the ink in the cartridge is missing because it dried, you know, dried out. You know, I don't know. I I, I think it's more or less – I think it's got to be a uh, just a, an economic thing where okay. they just don't want to. So you work for one of the major retailers in the U.S., how much is the difference between a short cartridge and a long international cartridge? What's oh, the cost let's, difference? Let's take a look. Oh, a cost difference? Let's see. Yeah, what's the cost difference to a retailer, to a, to you guys? And then what's the cost difference for consumers like me? Let's see. Because I think the only – one of the only brands that do actually offer it in the long size, uh, let's see, is, is probably Waterman, I would say. Waterman ink cartridges – they offer it both in the small and the large size, so I'm just looking that up right now. Yeah, so sure, a pack good. of a pack of eight will run you nine dollars and fifty cents. Okay, share the screen. So everybody Actually, can some see. of them are oh, okay. That's the mini. Okay, so hold on one second. Because I'm just I'm just wondering. I think more so than cost. I think that. One of the bigger reasons is because maybe, I don't know, manufacturers are, I think they're maybe guessing that people won't use the ink cartridge, maybe, or that if somebody is using ink cartridges, they're newer at fountain pens and won't bottle fill. And I guess you're right, there's less for it to dry out if left unused. But that doesn't make sense either, because the more ink there is, the longer it takes to dry out. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, so this is, uh, this is a pack of eight, which are the larger, this is the larger size, so that's 950. And okay. then... How much is a regular pack? The regular pack, so this is the mini, and you get a pack of six for 725. So it seems like, is that the mini size? Yeah. The standard ones that everybody's using. So it seems like it's more cost effective and cheaper to get the longer ones. Oh, absolutely, right? yeah. So it's always going to be it's always going to be that way. Yeah, cuz it's so in that case would yeah, it well, be I mean, ultimately to include... ultimately fill with bottled ink, but the thing is like with you know, with cartridges, it's you know, the, the longer ones are going to be more cost effective to buy um for for the consumer because you're getting more ink out of it like per milliliter. Well, so here's my thing. It was seven fifty for six of them, nine fifty for eight of the long ones. So seven fifty for the short, six of the short mm -hmm. ones, nine fifty for eight of the long ones. Now mm -hmm. the long ones are pretty much two times what a small one is, right? So it's right. more cost effective. One. How much is it per cartridge at this price? So what's nine fifty divided by eight? Do you have a calculator? I do. So that's a dollar nineteen rounding up. A dollar nineteen. So how much mm -hmm. is each individual mini cartridge at seven fifty? If there's six seven. of them. Dollar twenty five. So you're telling me the reason why re manufacturers and retailers include the short cartridges is because it's cheaper, but what we just saw right now is that it's actually more for a short cartridge. That's interesting. But I I think um maybe for the short ones we look at Monteverde. Let's see what Monteverde charges for their ink cartridges. So they had three dollars. So maybe not a great example with Waterman, but let's say like with Monteverde, it's okay. three dollars for a for pack, a pack of, six. of six. That's fifty cents a piece. Yeah. Now let's take a look at so the that's cost so that's a lot ones. that's a lot che cheaper than than the than the the larger ones. But I don't think do we have the are the was it. I don't think we actually have Monteverde ink cartridges. Does Monteverde even make long cartridges? They, I think they do, but I don't believe that Gold Spot carries them. This is really they're they're really not that um, uh, high end demand. Even like looking at the Waterman ones, they're really not mm -hmm. that. Is because it does. It's more adaptable, at least, to use the shorter ones. What do you mean? The, it's because of the fact that if it would fit in any 
uh, fountain pen that uses international cartridges. So, like, let's say you'd yeah, be able to long, use it in the a long Kaveco cartridge, or... But the long cartridge would fit in any pen that uses Anything a that's converter. got a converter, yeah. Right. Yeah. So that so that would be that would definitely be beneficial in that regard. Um, mm. yeah, let's well, let's look up how much the long cartridges are for Monteverdi on a different site. Yeah, let's let's take a look at that here. I just want to solve the mystery of why the long international cartridges are not normally used. You know what I mean? Like Pen right. Chalet sells the Magnum Monteverdi Magnum. Look at the one all the way to the left. It's six yeah. bucks. For an eight pack, for an eight pack, right? So, how much does that put it at? If it's if there's eight of them and they're six bucks for eight of them, how much does that come out to for each cartridge? Keeping in mind that the small cartridge seventy five cents. Okay, so it's twenty five cents more per mm -hmm. cartridge. So if the short one is fifty cents and you're doubling it, so you're saving. I it is more cost effective because it's more it's seven. It's, yeah, for so wait, so so you're doing so seventy five cents a cartridge for the for the the magnum size, the larger right, size, the large size. It's fifty cents a cartridge for the small size, right? And the magnum size is essentially the large, the long international cartridge is essentially double, right? A short international cartridge. So if you were to double, if that six pack were a twelve pack, it would be six bucks, right? Mm -hmm. So. You're actually saving twenty five cents to double the size. It's cost effective, right? I wonder. I just. I really wonder why that's not the standard. Well, if we were starting our own pen company, we would we would make that the standard. We're not the large one. I don't. So think when are, when are the pens heading to your house? <laughs> oh no! If I were starting a pen company, the pens would definitely be he heading to your house. <laughs> <laughs> I just got rid of those damn t-shirts. We, we just got rid of those damn t-shirts. <laughs> hey, we. I remember carrying them into the student center at... My back, my back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. my ba I had back problems that day. <laughs> I blew up my back the day before. Yeah, on a Friday, I blew up my back and then ha was having trouble. I was lucky it wasn't my lower back. It was my mid-back. Mm -hmm. Is it better over. now, though? Yeah, it's a hundred percent better now. I was That's actually good. the other day I was doing doing squats and trap bar deadlifts, so I felt no like I didn't feel any pain or twinge or anything like that. So I think nice. I'm I'm back to normal. We'll find out today because I'm gonna I'm gonna do deadlifts today as well. Yeah. So deadlifts so, pull ups. Circling back to that uh, that Bennu, the Royal Flush. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was so that was that's like kind of the introductory part of when this uh, when this all gets kicked off with fountain pen day and then right. throughout november and then we have the black friday and cyber monday there's just going to be so much cool new stuff and it's just it, that's it's kind of like the first step of it okay so is, let me ask you cool. something let's talk about the bennu royal flush mm -hmm. who came up with the idea uh you know i think this was i think this is more of a kieran thing um, I could, because we had talked about a, uh, you know, the, the shooting star that was a pretty good success earlier this year. And, uh, and we were like, you know, looking at different types of glitter and, and just trying to figure out like, well, what, what else could we do? What theme could we do? And I think she had said, oh, you know, what if we did one with like the different, cause we had, um, some great success with the retro 51 tornado, the playing card series, the one mm -hmm. that they do like each one is like a speed you know uh queen king jack so they so th that's been pretty successful so she just was like oh you know maybe we should do one with the the card symbols in there you know i saw i see these we could put the those glitter pieces in there so that was uh you know that's how we, that came about and then they had shown it originally in the red trim and we're like i don't know because people like red especially that bold red may not be like everybody's cup of tea so i was like well, why don't we do the red and then have a variant in black and then that way kind of they complement each other because mm -hmm. you would have the, the the two red suits and the two black suits for a deck of cards. So mm, that's cool. Yeah. So it was Kieran's idea. She came up with it. I think I think it was most. Yeah, I, I mean, sometimes we just bat these things around, but I think she was the primary driver of this one. Mm, that's cool. So how long ago did you start this? 
Uh, this was probably, I think it's around the summer. I want to say that, yeah. Wow, there's, so Benu, yeah. Benu can... Benu gets shit done pretty fast. They, yeah, it was, it was very surprising, even with how crazy that everything was with the move and everything. That, mm-hmm. like, the shooting star was was went from, you know, like a design concept to being like, oh, well, here's a prototype. Oh, well, we could sh- ship the pens, but first, we need to move away from where we were manufacturing pens before. Just, just right. you know, give us a few minutes. We'll we'll just we'll get it back up and running again. So it's like it's like you know, kudos to them for being yeah, able to serious. turn See, stuff out they, so they, awesomely. They hustled and hauled ass. So yeah. the the I'm sorry, I already forgot. The Royal Flush is going to be released for Fountain Pen Day. No, it's already or, out. It's okay, already so, out. Yeah. So then, my question was, what are we? What are you guys doing for Fountain Pen Day? Oh, I can't talk about that. Still, that's still that still is going to be several days away. You gotta you gotta find out. You gotta sign up for them emails or or you oh. know email newsletter or or like follow. You gotta us on... give people. You gotta give people something to anticipate. You know, mm-hmm. all this secrecy is a turnoff. What do you guys well, do? Come on. Are you doing an event? Are you doing it will be a video? What's going on? Let's let's it, let's let's it talk just about might it. be the release of a fountain pen. Possibly. Okay. On Fountain Pen Day. You think oh, it would that... be appropriate. Right. And that's that's the one that you told me about after the show last week. Got it. Mm-hmm. And we can't talk about it. Right. Can't talk about yeah. it. I get it. Yeah, but there will also be on top of that some pretty cool deals. You know, mm-hmm. extra items being added to order, like get you know free gifts and stuff, and um, maybe a giveaway. Uh, so, so there's there, there's going to be some cool stuff going on um, that we want to throw in to you know further make the whole entire thing much more exciting and that's fun. cool. All right, so so, so there's going to be giveaways, there's going to be deals. So if if they don't know about the giveaway or how do they join the giveaway, how do they get involved, how do they do anything? You know what I mean? Like, are you going to do a video, a live video? What, what are we doing for that? What are we doing? I, yeah, because, no. I mean, listen, you're saying there's going to be a giveaway, but no mm-hmm. one at this point in time listening to this show has no idea how to in, get involved with the giveaway. Mm-hmm. They don't have a time. There's no – so, like, how is this going to be a successful event if you don't give them information? It, on it how shall to not be successful. It just <laughs> Huh? Yeah, it's, it's just it's just gonna get drowned out with everybody else doing fountain pen day stuff, and it's just gonna be it's just gonna be a, a just a total bomb. <laughs> it's that's it. It's gonna be a terrible success. Right. It's gonna be <laughs> all right. No, seriously, what are we doing? What are we doing? I, you know, honestly, I don't even know. Oh, I don't. So let's make plans right now. Let's say twelve o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Okay, okay. you go live at goldspot dot com. And do a fountain pen giveaway. And everybody watching during the time that you're going live, they can comment while you're live. They'll comment about something fountain pen related. We'll figure that out. Mm -hmm. And then the winning comment will be announced during the live of the giveaway. And the giveaway shall be a... This is where you step in. Something, something. (laughs) <laughs> maybe the, the maybe the pen that we're we're launching. I think beautiful. That would be, yeah, do a twelve o'clock Eastern Standard Time live video from Gold Spot Pens launching this new exclusive pen. Mm-hmm. Right, unbox it, talk about it, write with it, and then people as they're watching can comment on it, and the winning comment will win the very pen that you just unboxed. And sounds sample. like a good idea. You should really do this for a living. No, I think it'd be but bad. but listen, if that's what you want to do, you know, I think that's a great idea. Unbox the new exclusive pen. Mm-hmm. You can you can advertise it this Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at Gold Spot Pens Live. We're going to be doing an unboxing of a brand new exclusive pen in commemoration of Fountain Pen Day. Log on, watch us live, make comments. The winning comment during the live will be the winner of a giveaway of the very pen that we are unboxing. Should we do it on pen. YouTube, I would say, right? Cuz I mean like can we do live in one spot? Really? Or maybe or maybe if I get if I get Kieran or somebody else involved, I might be able to do it on Instagram too because we could just use two different phones and do it live at the same time. But then that might be a little tricky with the whole comments thing because then you're dealing with multiple streams at the same time but if i have somebody helping me is chris working that day uh 
I have to double check with him because like he, he has can... a he has a weird schedule. So don't you remember several years ago we did a fountain pen day event video yes. where we shot it live on YouTube. We <laughs> the video was three fucking hours long. <laughs> <laughs> it was a marathon. <laughs> right. I think you had you had like several energy drinks, and I regretted buying every one of them for you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and he would read us the comments while we're doing the video and stuff like mm -hmm. that yeah i think that's how you should do it i think that's how i should do it yeah i, I like the idea do it yeah yeah i mean yeah. i i just you know i just have to admit though that you know i just have between like we finally we actually got the the new uh catalogs in mm -hmm. um so the new fall the new fall issue is is in we're not actually going to be putting it into any orders until uh the ones actually get mailed out to the mm -hmm. customers uh, so it'll be at least in like another week for that uh, because there are some things in there that are not announced or released yet that we didn't, you know, we don't want to mention, you know, so, so, but we had that, we had the website, uh, the new theme, which I was involved in too. And that still has some issues that need to get worked out technical or otherwise. What, so. what, what did you do to the website? Uh, it, uh, I mean, the website has more of a it has a different look to it it's like a different really? it's a different theme update um it, which it was i have an idea uh -huh. open up the website let's share it with everybody and let's talk through it let's see if i notice differences because i haven't had a lot of time let's take okay. a look at the website and see how different it is and then you can explain the differences and stuff this we is going to be fun because i'm going to be super quick, critical we, we took a little quick uh uh peed at it before while we were looking at the yeah go to the home page let's check this out So okay. I have that. Let's see. So far, it looks the same. What's different here? So what's what's different here is that the the so we use the same four panel, uh, kind of a big splash page that's here. Um, okay. But what it does is that, well, now you have like this 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 bar here comes down. There's it it comes down pretty fully so that you could easily pick what you what you need there. But a lot of the navigation, a lot of the color schemes, and everything had just pretty much stayed the same. Uh, because, because you don't really want too much of a jarring jump from one style to another. So, um, so a lot of it was very similar, but like this, um, the, the little subtle transitions and the, the full image, uh, that's here, like kind of like the, the, the way that things are popping up at the bottom, um, you know, see how it's kind of like fading in and that the images kind of subtly zoom as you're hovering over them. These are just like little small little tweaks that happen with the site during the new theme update. So it, um, it it's pretty much the same thing, just a little enhancements and and embellishments, basically. Yeah, and then also too here is that um, this was a new section that was added where uh, the featured reviews get put in. So if you wrote a review, and you know it was it was highlighted by one of our staff, you know just it would show up on this uh, carousel that's here. Okay. So you could see that um, there's the Fountain Pen University, the the journal, which is the the blog, basically. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's Fountain Pen University? Well, Fountain Pen Us University is a it's a resource section. Um, so if you look up here with the uh, with the drop down where it says Fountain Pen University, there's several articles like, you know, just basics on on filling pens, maintaining pens, cartridge convert you know compatibility guide. Then there's Fine Pen Academy, which is more of a catch all for the other modes. So, you know, anything that's non fountain pen related or just comparing also it's like, I think one of them is like, is like fountain pens or the difference between a ballpoint and a fountain pen, that sort of thing. So there's a lot of different informational articles that just help expand your knowledge about pens or, you know, the various things that you need to do. So to that's, them. that's the drop down though. What happens if you click become a pen expert on? Fountain well, that will bring you to Fountain Pen University, which currently this is one of the things that need to get fixed is that this little navigation here is is kind of wonky. So one of the introductory video, how to use a fountain pen, is uh, pen, is our pen, pen, two and a half pen, pens pen, uh, parody. I remember pen, doing this. Pen, pen, so, pen, so, that's, pen, so that's kind of like the introduction to it. Um, then if you go to any of these other informational articles that are part of that navigation, uh, you would then have a, uh, you know, inf like either pictures or videos uh, that would then be able to help with filling, writing, uh, anything that you need, so. Oh, wow. 
that's yeah, pretty but cool. that's 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 something that still needs to get fixed. I need to uh, do that. The about us page and stuff like that. Some of the navigation so got a little. Is there any major changes that have been done? Because so far, to me, it, it looks pretty comparable to what it was before. Uh, one of the more, I would say, one of the one of the more not so subtle changes uh, is is like mostly on the product page where. Uh, you would basically basically have like an in-stock notification, then also information about like pickup, uh, the product description instead of kind of falling underneath the images and right above the customer reviews is kind of, it's it's tucked away in here. So it's mm -hmm. still, you still, you can find all the information that you want to. And then when, you, when you're scrolling through it, you would still see the the pen there you could still switch between all the images that mm -hmm. wasn't like that before you couldn't read the description and then have the pen on the page at the same time because it was down here uh so that so that's kind of the product page is like one of the main things that we wanted to start to enhance a little bit more on and uh and and make it more functional and just more user friendly for <laughs> for everybody hey you know what i was thinking since i'm looking at the benu talisman fountain pen in royal flush red mm -hmm. I think for both the red and the black one, I think you need to include a disclaimer that this is in no way a commentary or diminishment of gambling addiction and then leave a phone number or internet website resource for people with gambling addiction because people are going to look at that and be like, you're so insensitive about gambling addiction. Mm. Well, and I mean, you can still play cards without money. It's just, it's just it's more or less about like cards, you know, card playing. You it's know what, not necessarily like gambling per se. You know what? I I really think you should have added a fish somewhere on that. Because when I think cards, you know what I can only think of? Go fish. Yeah. That was the only card <laughs> game I knew how to play as a kid. Go fish. Or did you ever play mm -hmm. Slapjack? No, I, I don't think so. No? Did, no. It, I don't know if that's a real game or not. Or if my sister and myself just made it up. But basically we would shuffle a card, a deck of cards. Okay. Then we would distribute one each until we each have half a deck. So the the card faces are down so you can't see what it is. And then what you do is you flip a card into the center. And then okay. she flips a card in the center. And we take turns until a jack comes out. As soon as a jack comes out, you smack the pile in the middle. And whoever smacks it first keeps the pile. And then you oh. keep going until somebody has no cards left. Ah, okay. So it's like it's it's about like the luck of where the jack falls, but then it's also about reaction timing and trying to slap the whole card pile. Yeah, I see. I see. Well, we play a similar game like that called War. Have you ever heard of that one? No. What's War? So War is the same principle where it's like you divide the deck of cards in in half. One person gets one part. You can actually play with multiple people too, and each person that you just flip over the top card, and then the high card wins the the group of cards and then oh, I remember the ace now. the ace yeah. beats all like it's so it's just you just keep flipping and and so every time every time that everybody flips the person who's the high card just takes down the cards and you just play until nothing's left and then if you tie so if you both have the same card value thrown out there then what you do is like oh we're going to war so then you you put three face down cards and then you flip another card so that way it's like when you would actually win more cards out of that pot mm -hmm. because because it, it because of the the initial two cards that matched each other and then the extra three cards that were placed face down and mm -hmm. then the and then the final card after that so that's like kind of a big swing if that you know if that goes your way i see all right kill the screen so that Hold way people light. can might be yeah i couldn't hear you sorry i, oh, I said <laughs> you know close out the screen you can close okay. out the screen now Wow, so v yeah. very fountain pen and playing card intensive discussion today so far, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. I do like playing cards. I enjoy that, and I enjoyed doing the video for the the Royal Flush. It was a mm. lot of fun. Uh, I broke out my my chip set that I have. I I hadn't used that in a long time. I used to play cards a lot and have people come over, and we would have uh, uh, poker tournaments and stuff like that but that was before kids and mm -hmm. that just doesn't happen as much now mm -hmm. so it was it was hard it was hard to get everybody together even back then to get like a good crowd of people going because you know eventually you you'd have your you'd have your friends that you know know that they can't really play that well and then yeah. the ones that that 
have gotten it and they they play online poker and stuff like that and then it just becomes very obvious that poker is not so much a game of luck that it is like a game of skill when yeah. you start to understand how to play it so mm -hmm. so like so like then you know you have and then everybody's got you know their own bills to pay and stuff like that and you just, just there's not that much uh left over for the uh for the the uh uh, gambling or the mm. or the poker playing stuff. So gotcha. Yeah. So let's go back to talking about Fountain Pen Day. Mm -hmm. So now you're going to do an online event at Gold. Yeah, Spot. I gotta I gotta schedule this for myself. I gotta put it in the calendar now. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to do that. We'll flesh it out together so that way it it's cool. I think that it's a great idea. I think people will appreciate. It. Listen, a lot of people are going to be doing Fountain Pen Day discounts and giveaways and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. All right. Let's not gotta keep do it something, secret. Gotta what do kind something of extra fun and what and kind enjoyable. of a, what kind of discounts can we look forward to at Gold Spot with regard to Fountain Pen Day? There, there will be more or less. I'm I'm saying that there sh there will be like basically free items getting thrown in there. Not so much like discounting wise, because you know we always run into the issue with like some manufacturers not liking this versus you know others. But there's going to be like. It's it's going to be like a mini Black Friday with how right you know there's no but be I'm some... saying isn't it isn't Fountain Pen Day the one day where distributors and manufacturers allow discounts that are not common throughout the rest of the year they do not no oh okay so I mean but that that doesn't apply well actually Edison pens they don't discount their pens ever no but they will do like a group buy once a year yeah right? which actually that they did that just recently with the um they did a comet. That was mm. done with uh, Brooks material, which looks really, really cool. I they saw did, those. Like, yeah. I like the finial. It's a little transparent dome. You know yeah, what they I like could, a lot. What they should have done is they should put have a put like a, in there. a little mosquito in there and called it the Jurassic <laughs> pen, the Jurassic <laughs> Edison or, or something. You know what I mean? Because that little yeah. dome, I think of John Hammond and the character John Hammond from the original Jurassic Park where he has a little cane with a mosquito inside the yes. amber and stuff yes. like that. With, that would be uh, cool. No, no expense spared, or what right. do you say? Yeah, it was like, just just put the mosquitoes in there. I don't care how, how much it costs. <laughs> that was such a cool movie. I remember yeah. the timing of the first Jurassic Park. I was a young boy, and the timing of that was fantastic because that was the age where I was super into dinosaurs and paleontology and all kinds of stuff like that. I mean, mm -hmm. I remember I read so much about the different dinosaur periods and archaeology and stuff like that. I knew exactly how many vertebrae were in a tyrannosaur, a brontosaur. You know, I, I can't remember all the names. It was so many years ago, but I remember so much detail. I remember, I remembered what dinos, fossilized dinosaur poop was called. And I... What is it I, called? I can't remember, <laughs> but now you can't I even remember. I even went to Kenro Industries several years ago to do a game show. I hosted a game show just for fun, mm -hmm. and that was like a lightning round question for Ryan. Mm -hmm. And I remember that was a, a fun one because Ryan's such a good sport when it comes to like jokes and practical jokes. I competed Carrie Yeager against Ryan in lightning round questions. Whoever went, answers the most questions correct wins. I gave Carrie questions like, how do you spell your last name? What's <laughs> your favorite color? And then I gave Ryan questions like, just bizarre, non-pen related, like impossible to answer questions. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> what and... is the atomic weight of platinum? <laughs> <laughs> I think I even asked him something stupid like, what is, what is the temperature of like the cosmic background in outer space? <laughs> and the answer was negative two degrees Kelvin. I think I remember that correctly. So he was like 32 degrees. He didn't know what to say because it's just such a ridiculous question. And all 10 questions were like that. I'm sorry, all nine questions were like that, except for the very last question. What Disney cartoon shares the same name with a male strip club. And he was like, Chippendales? And that was the only question he got right. <laughs> and that was the last question. I just thought it was funny. It was a funny, good, fun time. But yeah, I, I, I was so into dinosaurs and then that movie came out. Yeah, I was just- I, I was into them too, but like I- yeah. 
I was more when I was like maybe five or six, I would mm. read a lot of the dinosaur books and stuff and, mm. and absorb all the various dinosaur species that mm. were found or, you know, that they put together fossils for. And, mm. uh, but by, by the time the Jurassic Park came out, I, I was kind of out of that, but I still really enjoyed it because like that part of me was still there. So I, I still am fascinated with, with dinosaurs, but, right. um, yeah, you know, but not as like not as knowledgeable. Like I don't yeah. know what dinosaur poop is called. I just so. I just I used to know. I don't know, but I I really enjoyed studying about dinosaurs and stuff like that. And the thing that always bothered me about all these Jurassic Park movies is, let's say that really happened and dinosaurs really came to fruition and they became a problem. You know how easy it would be for our military just to shut it all down. You need like maybe three or four attack helicopters. That'll just solve the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, an M fifty machine gun, chain gun. They'll just take them all out. Just the whole. You could have thousands of dinosaurs. It wouldn't be a problem, right? Yeah. Just the amount of firepower that the military has, they could just you know fly in one flyby with maybe a couple dozen attack helicopters. Problem you know, solved. I was a big fan of uh, was the card collection. It, it was just like a card series called Dinosaur Attacks. I don't remember. And that. it was kind of similar to Mars Attacks, but it was with dinosaurs. So it was like the the this card set featured illustrations like paint like you know dr drawn or painted illustrations of dinosaurs just running amok through society so like you know brontosaurus is like stampeding through city streets tyrannosaurus is like ripping up movie theaters and like it would be really it's kind of it's also along the similar lines of like the garbage pail kids sort of thing mm. because this stuff was like grotesque mm -hmm. it was it was really like raw it's supposed to be like edgy because that just kids gravitated toward that kind of stuff yeah and I think it actually came with, if I'm not mistaken, it might have came with, like, a little stick of gum that went mm. with it, too. It was, like, one of those types of things you would get. I suddenly had a great idea for the next retro exclusive for you guys. Okay. The dinosaur series. Oh, wait, no, they already did that with the Smithsonian. They did, they did a dinosaur fossil one. I actually have it still. Um, they had the Dinosauria, which was a limited edition popper, and then there's the Dino Fossil, which is still, I think, a current line item. Wasn't that the Smithsonian? Collection. Yeah, it is a Smithsonian one. Yeah. Yeah, I lost yeah. my my dinosaur pen, the Smithsonian, the one with like the tyrannosaur on the. Man, you're just losing pens left and right. What oh no, but I lost on? that. I lost that a, a, a while ago. A long while ago. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that was I lost that. I I think it's the curse of the ballpoint rollerball. Like it is so easy <laughs> for me to lose that. Any retractable pen is just not safe with you. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's that, but. I'm, I'm at a loss. I'm afraid so what, to even just replace it. What is your favorite dinosaur? Ooh, I we'll think... say it on three. One, two, three. Velociraptor. Velociraptor. <laughs> I was about to say that. Velociraptor. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> yup. <laughs> Want to do karate in the garage? <laughs> yeah, I, I'd say the Velociraptor. Yeah, or you know what I was always a fan of. The Stegosaurus. I, I just always felt the Stegosaurus was too slow. Like a pack of Velociraptors could just rip that. Oh, thing apart. I'm like, listen, I'm not saying it's my favorite dinosaur because it's faster, the strongest. I think it's just the most interesting. You know that they say that the Stegosaurus, the head is too small relative to the rest of the size of the body. So scientists have hypothesized, at least when I read it when I was a kid, mm -hmm. that the brain didn't exist in the head. It existed between the thighs and the hips. Because oh, wow. if the brain existed in the head, it wouldn't be able to, I guess, power or sustain the rest of the body because the rest of the mm -hmm. body is so huge. Yeah. Right? it's You know, it's, it's really interesting, too, is to can think about dinosaurs and think about the fact that for most of human existence up until the last hundred years, like, we had no idea they existed. Like we had no clue, but and and also from what we're trying to gather from just the very scant amount of evidence that's there, mm -hmm. just like the bones and just exhuming them from you know places where we think that that's how they they died, just why they where they laid or whatever, and they try to piece it together. It's it, like our impression of what they may look like, like the Jurassic Park vision of them, could be completely totally off. I think I think somebody had envisioned what a T Rex would look like if it was more, which uh, which a lot of people hypothesize that the um, the dinosaurs were because they are kind of 
descendant or no, the birds are descendants of dinosaurs that mm-hmm. they can they, they think about that that like that like imagine like the t-rex is like a giant bird as opposed to a giant flightless bird as opposed to like a big reptile and that's like kind of yeah where where so where a lot of people think it's like it's just it could be really wild to think of you know what they were actually like way well back i when. think i think so, and this is all based on information that i read when i was 15 12 to 15 years old and i'm 42 right now so i can't i might be wrong but i do believe that people believed that dinosaurs were closely related to reptiles up until the discovery of a dinosaur called the archaeopteryx Mm -hmm. which they discovered had feathers and was a lot like a bird and then they started looking into it and they found out that more of these dinosaurs are closer related to birds than they are reptiles and the reason why they assumed that they were reptilian was because of the existing atmosphere scientists believe there was a certain atmosphere that existed a gazillion years ago when when terry was born and dinosaurs existed <laughs> right and and in order for them to survive like the cosmic radiation or the weather or the temperatures that they were like these big monsters with like leathery thick dense skin but in reality mm-hmm. i they they're now saying okay they could have been covered in feathers who knows maybe they were like ginormous birds running around some just couldn't fly and stuff like that but then wouldn't the fossils show outlines of feathers well uh, like feathers that that that's like i mean like when you take a a a fossil of a of of just a regular bird i don't think you're gonna see feathers on it i think because feathers decompose really quickly and they they? just and and i don't think they're heavy enough to even give an impression yeah maybe that's right maybe maybe so if that's the case then it's possible that all these dinosaurs didn't look like naked leathery animals. They well, I were... think the I think also one of the the reasons why you would see them as like more lizard like is that since the alligators and crocodiles have have yeah you know, were were originating like that that their species has has been around forever and ever and they say it's like oh well you know kind of you know with all the sharp teeth and stuff like that maybe it, mm-hmm. they could be more reptilian and and you know and they're composition and it's like okay well imagine it that way but Mm -hmm. may not be so yeah curious it is it is it's it's really interesting to like kind of go back and just and just think about that kind of stuff because it's just like the world was a completely different place without you know the human race on it and it just was you know maybe maybe like you just it's just could think about like how like life existed back then it's just crazy you know what i i wonder i don't think i ever thought of to ask in or look up and look into what was the life expectancy of a dinosaur right like how would you i don't think they could even quantify that i i couldn't imagine yeah maybe not because i i mean like yeah it's it's just it's just crazy just to think like uh, because like they could do things like figure out like how long ago it lived but i i doubt that they could figure out like what the how old they were life cycle yeah Yeah. because if you think about it it was pretty savage back then right like if you're a dinosaur you're born if you draw the short end of the stick you're born as a small plant-eating dinosaur and if you're if you draw the 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 if you're you get a lucky draw you're a tyrannosaur right and if you're a tyrannosaur you have a a lot better chance of living longer if you're not a tyrannosaur and you eat grass you're probably going to get eaten by the tyrannosaur. So like every day, imagine being a plant eating dinosaur and you wake up every day, you might get eaten alive. Right. And the the odds circle of life right there. Right. No, but it's, it's, it's more like a stop sign of life because the odds are, (laughs) I mean, really, it's not a diagonal stop sign that says, right. No, ye shall not pass. (laughs) I mean, think about this. I don't know what the ratio is. Let's just say 50% of all human beings only eat plants and the other 50% of human beings only eat people who eat plants. Okay. Mm. Every day you walk outside, somebody is 50% of the people that only eat plant eating people is going to try to eat you. Right. I feel like that that's what life was like now, like what this could be a dystopian novel that is like a viewing of our future. It's like, welcome to a world. Where half of the human race has decided to eat only plants, right. while the other half, in rejection of this plant-eating behavior, has decided to eat the other half of human 
<laughs> society. I, I change my mind. I need to make the scenario more realistic. So forgetting about that, because listen, if I were a if I were a plant only eating human, and someone who only eats people who eat plants is trying to eat me, there's a fifty fifty chance that I could fuck up that other guy, right? So let's okay. take that out of the equation because back then dinosaurs that got eaten didn't have a chance against a tyrannosaur, okay? So let's put it like this. 50% of the planet are people. The other 50% of the planet are grizzly bears that only eat people, okay? <laughs> and you don't have, you know, every day we walk outside, we interact, like we could walk outside to go to 7-Eleven, but there might be like a dozen grizzly bears. But in order mm. to, for you to survive, you have to go to 7-Eleven and get a plant-based snack, right? And then mm. not only do you, do you have to go outside to get the plant-based snack, when you eat it, you can only eat it outside, right? Because that's what, <laughs> that's what dinosaurs did. Like, like a plant-eating dinosaur will just walk around, see some grass, and start eating it. Bend over, stick its ass in the air, and start eating the grass, and then another dinosaur will just come along and eat him while he's eating the grass. That was life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, that's that's how life is still like when in the wild too. Is that there's just there's just there's the food chain and just some are atop the food chain and others are on the bottom of it. That's just how it is. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I but for some reason, I feel like the dinosaur kingdom was far more brutal. Mhm. Mm cuz they were dinosaurs. Maybe cuz they were just so much bigger. Yeah. Right? I don't know. It just seems like I mean, think about it. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. The, well, think about the animal too. kingdom right now is pretty brutal. Think about this: is is that during the entire uh, span of human history, when we look back and we try to find fossilized remains of mm -hmm. humans from the start of when you know Homo sapiens first started to like evolve themselves away from their predecessors, that very very little skeletal evidence remains of it, right? Mm -hmm. So, and that's even, that's not as long ago. I mean, that, that's not even, I'm trying to, let's try, try to word it properly, but like, but like, that's not as long ago as when the dinosaurs, that's even, that's, that's a, so like the fact that we have a lot more remains of like dinosaurs around, but like, we still don't even know the half, I think of what was out there. Like, because there could have been other things that were even more massive or like, or like even like a, a lot of smaller dinosaurs that just didn't make the cut of the I fossilized don't, I don't record. understand what you're trying to say. So, I'm just say saying, because like out of like, so out of entire human history, like Homo sapiens, like we've had like what, 10, something like 10, like, oh no, a hundred billion people have lived throughout the entire like history of humans. Okay. And like, and like at the very, very beginning when that happened that we only have maybe like a few skeletal remains of like the first early humans and they find and they find them every so often but we're talking like so so very few and like we have a lot of different dinosaur remains but like but like you know how many more just were out there and we just don't know about it that are you talking about like dinosaurs or or human remains well, I'm saying like dinosaurs too, because we found dinosaurs. We were able to find the remains of different types of dinosaurs. There's granted, there's not a lot of that stuff around there, but but I'm saying like that there could have been so many more different fossils that just aren't found yet. You know that oh, we sure. haven't. Oh sure. I mean, know. I think the same goes for human remains. Right. But I think the difference is. So like dinosaurs never documented anything. You know what I'm saying? Like human beings are the first creatures on the, in the history of the planet that we know of. Because maybe there was, you know, <laughs> another existence of another civilization. I was just watching the Transformers movies. Apparently, the Decepticons were here tens and thousands of years before humans. But anyway, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but humans documented stuff, right? So there may be way more like Neanderthal or human prehistoric human remains that. Mm -hmm we didn't find because we don't need to, right? So like the reason why we wanna find more dinosaur remains is because we wanna learn more about the dinosaurs. There's less clues left for future generations to figure stuff out so we have to look for them. When it comes to human remains, it's kinda of like, well, all right, so this guy wrote on a cave, he had a family of five. We found the five skeletons. Right, let's go to another cave. This guy says he has a family of two. He has two skeletons. 
then there's another cave that says that everybody who ever lived in this area is buried in this spot over here. And then they go and find those, that burial ground. And then they go to another area and they find the same pattern of behavior. They don't need to disturb maybe another burial site just to figure mm-hmm. out, you know what I'm saying? So there's, there's documented human recordings, whether it be scratchings on a wall or the discovery of some kind of paper or something like that, right? That they don't need to continue searching for answers because maybe more of the answers are left for the future generations. Whereas dinosaurs, they would just like walk, hey, that guy looks good, eat him, shit, die. And that's the end of the story and there's not much, you can't figure much out from that, right? Mm -hmm. This is what I'm guessing and I'm basing this on absolutely no knowledge other than what I see in Jurassic Park and Transformers, all five Transformers movies. Six, if you include Bumblebee, which takes place 20 years before the first Transformers movie. But anyway, I don't know. Maybe maybe that has something to do with it. That's just a guess. I'm not basing this on any information. I'm not an authority in any way, shape, or form. But if anybody wants to join the discussion, feel free. Write in. Pedertainmentpodcast yeah. at gmail.com. And, but the thing is, though, that statement is an interesting statement. It conjures up questions, what you said. But it also, we would also, in order to answer that, we would also need to know how much like how much information or how many fossils have we discovered with regard to human remains versus dinosaur remains you know what i mean mm-hmm. and are we still looking for historical human remains or or did we lose that opportunity because you know we just settled and then built over ground and we're not willing to dig stuff up now because civilization is built over on top of it yeah and well i think too is that a lot of it um, I mean, if you think about it, that's what I call fossil fuels is that uh, a lot of it got compressed into coal or into oil. So, so like over time, all of that dead organic matter has mm-hmm. now, you know, become something that you put in your gas tank, you know, or that keeps the lights on. So it's like, it's like we've squandered all of these awesome fossil remains. Not that we would have been able to use them anyway, because they turned into the coal or oil but Mm -hmm. um but like if if nature itself would have left them untouched for you know millions of years then you know we wouldn't have coal or oil to you know use as fuel so Mm -hmm. so anyway listen very scientific discussion i I enjoy (laughs) yes you can't call it scientific discussion because we have no scientific knowledge yeah like so so we don't know what we're talking about but we're just we could say (laughs) sciencey Science, it's discuss- scientific imitational yes. discussion that is based in no knowledge whatsoever, but interesting because, you know, raises questions and stuff. And we'll look yeah. into this and maybe somebody who's listening is thinking, wow, these fuckers are dumb. Let me correct their shit. So, but it's there's like, there's like the, the one paleontologist that's listening to the podcast right now. And just, I am like, willing to bet pounding are- on the keyboard. It's like yeah. wrong. Everything is wrong. Right. I would like, I would love to hear about it. I would, if anybody out there has any knowledge of paleontology, let us know. But we got to wrap this up because it's getting late. Mm -hmm. And I do want to say, I hope whatever you guys do on Fountain Pen Day, you have a great time. Make sure you keep your eyes out for whatever Tom has in store. And the Atlas, yeah, Atlas Station Years is doing something as well as Fountain Pen Hospital is doing something. Apparently, there's a lot of giveaways. A lot of giveaways coming up. It's going to be a lot of fun. So pay attention. Yeah. Search online. If Gold Spot's doing something, pay attention for that. Everything is going to just be a lot of fun. And yeah. thanks again for joining us. Love you guys. Be well. Be safe. Stay inky.